stuff was uh, really Save Us Savior, the Memorial Acclamation. Yeah. And then, uh, remind me, what did you say about communion? Yes, perfect. Yeah, and we'll do... Oh, you mean like in between the world? Yeah, I'll do that in between. Um, and yeah, just to, just to pad it, I'll do a full instrumental verse. Yes. Yeah, that sounds good. Excellent. All right. Take your time on this. You need me. All right. Don't don't feel rushed. As you go, I'm gonna change. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I've done, in what I've failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. Seated at the right hand of 
of the Father. Have mercy, have mercy on us. For you, O Lord, are the Holy One. You, O Lord, are the Lord. You, O Lord, are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God. Almighty ever living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels, who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the Israelites. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshipped God, and exclaimed, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes? And where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The Word of the Lord.
that longs to see your face. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it, for he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? One whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. 
Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you, and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. There was a Jesuit priest and Benedictine priest and Franciscan priest. In the middle of traveling for their mission, they got stranded in a deserted island, no man island. And out of desperation, they prayed. But somehow, the one who showed up was not the God, but the lamp. And for knowing that lamp might make a miracle, they, they brushed it. And genie came out of the lamp. And if you wanted to tell me your wish. So Jesse Priest said, I belong to a college and that's where I need to go. So let me go right away. So Jeannie let it happen. And Benedictine said, I belong to the monastery where the work and prayers are combined, combined and that is my heaven and I want to go back. Again, that let it happen immediately. And Franciscan, a Franciscan priest, he said to Jeannie, well, I kind of like them. Why don't you let them back here? <laughs> so they all died on the same day and went to heaven. And on the day they were accepted, the Benedictine and Franciscans, they went into the side door where they had to witness a Jesuit priest being welcomed by many angels surrounding Our Lady Mary, Peter and Saint Ignatius and all those wonderful name saints. And Franciscans and Benedictines, they were grumbling about this discrimination. And, and Jesus said, well, you guys are always coming to heaven. And this Jesuit priest, it has been 500 years for the first time in 500. Today, we celebrate the, all, the solemnity of all saints. In the Bible, the holy people, saints, the Greek word hagion shows up 50 times. And in the Bible, it means they are the people who join the ecclesia, the church, from where they are being called. That's what it means, literally, the ecclesia means. All the church goers from the beginning of the church up until now, we are called the holy people or saints. For the reason that Bible indicates that we all are holy because we believe in God, the Holy One. When we are with God, when we are with the holy people, our soul becomes more holy. But when we are in this simple world, we somehow forget this holy place, the holy teachings, and eventually we get tired of holy stories. 
because our soul become, becomes contaminated by this secular world. I was you know, Jesuit novitiate for two years. The lifestyle was the monastic cloistered lifestyle. We were all confined for two years without having to be able to contact the people outside and the activities taking place outside. And this holy place was heaven to us because we got to learn about our Jesuit history and study about the Bibles and having quiet time in meditation and Uh, in the afternoon, we would go out in a vineyard and a field to do the farming. It was a quite quiet, heavenly place. If I had to pick up the time I find uh, in my lifetime, I find that was mostly he- heavenly. I I think I have to pick up my novitiate time. But yet, even in this small novitiate house, there was a competition because everybody was taught that we were called to be saints. We all want to be a saint. Even we all wanted to be canonized. Actually, we all lived with some saints. Saint John Paul II is the saint we live together. And Teresa, uh, Mother Teresa is another person we live together. And with my physical eyes, I uh, met these people, especially Father John, uh, Pope John Paul II when I was a seminarian. I encountered him a one, minute, a, a one meter away from me. And out of this shyness, and, and my mind was totally disoriented, and, and I, was for, I, I forgot to kneel down and kiss his uh, ring. And I lost that chance forever. And he peacefully disappeared from my sight. And he became a saint. If I had known that he would become a saint, I should have done it. <laughs> But people say, the living with saints, it is a martyrdom. Once we have a saint in a community, that means other community members are all martyrs. Living with the saintly people It's not an easy task at all. Because in this saintly disposition and saintly attitude, we see apparently hypocrisy in them. And we feel tired of witnessing this guy being too holy and far beyond my capacity. It's no fun experience at all. Living in this quiet, heavenly place, after finishing my novitiate training, encountering this secular world was another disaster because we all found that the drivers were driving too fast because we were used to slower life. And studying and working with this college environment, we found that people were too aggressive and too violent and too sarcastic and too cynical. It was not easy for us to handle these sarcastically toned people. And we were talking that probably the novice was the heavenly place and this world is not for us. But apparently, the church teaches the communio sanctorum, which means the communion of the saints. The church consists of two communities. One, 
the community in heaven who are already saints. Another community is this earthly community that is called the church, us. The church apparently is the combination of the holiness and the sinfulness. We all have this nature. The beauty about the teaching of the church regarding the communio sanctorum is that church embraces our sinful side. Let's say some people might want to choose the life by leaving this secular, in a sense, corrupted world behind to pursue the purity in the soul. And he might want to join the monastery in the way I did. But even there, as you hear the the counselings from nuns and uh, the monks, you hear the hellish life and hellish competition and hellish hatred amongst living them. That is not a fun place, but yet they get to enjoy the peaceful, blissful solitude. Then the problem is, then let's say, let's bring all these holy people from the monastery so that this world can be sanctified by these people. What happens is, these saintly people who are trained in monastic holy lifestyle, they fail. On the contrary, they are contaminated by this secular world. It's not easy for us to keep the sanctification going on. From my perspective, the life, the holiness, pursued, being pursued by you or by me, I believe that your place is more difficult than my place. In that sense, you are living in a real monastery. Where, from where, you are trained to be sanctified in a raw way. It is the real place where we need to be converted and practice the teachings of Jesus and trying to sanctify myself and the whole world. You have stronger voices than I have because you are living in this real world. And this real world is where God claims that this is my church too. The holiness consists of two sides of human nature. One angelic side of our nature, another one satanic side of our nature. These two sides all together, we are named the holy. We all are saints. We may think that because of my sinful tendencies, because of my sinning, continuously sinning environment, I will do well after my retirement when I do not have to deal with the sins. To raising my children, to support my family in financial stability, I have to ruin myself. And I feel bad about it, but that's the world I belong to. Please, please do not think in that way. That's what the holiness is about. You all are holy people. Because you are immediately and imminently, every day, living in this corrupted world, going through this pandemic disease, 
we are very much appreciative the primary caregiver, first line helpers who try to rescue the 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 people infected by the coronavirus, and due to their environment, they are easily exposed in coronavirus, and many of them died for us. Jesus came here to redeem the world, this sinful world, and he died by the sins of the world because he, this holy man, had no choice but being contaminated. We all are called to be whole people in this real world where the diseases are there. And in living this world, we have no choice but being contaminated. Having the name sinners, don't feel ashamed. That's our name. From where we become sanctified. Our sins and our sinful tendencies, our frustrations, angers, and sorrowness, This human nature is determined by this corrupted world. They are the materials from where God wants to work His job to sanctify us. While we live in this world, in this body, it's not easy for us to walk away, to choose the purity in our soul. That's a luxury. There is no such thing, even inside the monastery. But through the sinners like us, God has not given up His redemptive plans. You are sinners. Therefore, you are called holy people. We are sinners. Therefore, we are called these saints. The heaven belongs to the brave sinners. Please rise. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, He was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again in the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In communion with all the saints, we offer our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. For the Church, may the Holy Spirit continue to lead and guide her. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected officials, may the Lord sow the seeds of compassion in their work of guarding the well-being of the most vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater respect for the value of human life, 
from the moment of conception to the moment of natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in the recognition of vocations to the priesthood, the diaconate, religious life, and dedicated lay people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who experience illness of body, mind, or spirit from this virus, and from every other illness, including those that have asked for our prayers, Wesley Hudzik, and for those mentioned in our bulletin, may they and their caregivers feel God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, the parish of St. Raphael, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died this week from this virus and from every other illness, including Arlene Depp, Mini Romano, Manuel Arestin, Teresa Serra, Loreto Cambi, and Cesare Stelma. And for all our loved ones who have died, we pray to the Lord. For the beatification of Father Michael McGivney, diocesan priest and founder of the Knights of Columbus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our intentions, those given to the ministry of praise, and those that remain in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we trust in your love and mercy. We bring these prayers before you. We ask that you answer them according to your will. Through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother. We are the great array of our brothers and sisters, already gives you eternal praise. Towards her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing thy faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church. 
through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts Heaven and earth are full of your glory Hosanna in the highest Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Hosanna in the highest Hosanna in the highest You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks and broke it and gave to his disciples and saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave to disciples and saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of death and resurrection we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with French our Pope and John Berry, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. of God you take away the sins of the world have mercy have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world have mercy have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world grant us grant us Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, have had those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, for only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. proceeds 
from the mouth of God. Allelu, Alleluia. has a few words to say ah, after lunch. let us pray as we adore your God who alone are holy and wonderful in all our saints we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland through Christ our Lord Please be seated. Father Holtz has a few words to say. This doesn't really, this doesn't really require us to sit down. It's a very short notice. Because we have, uh, it happened, we had a play in the sport, like everybody aware. There are texts and emails going out reportedly from me saying to go and get a. There we go. We'll try that again. I just wanted to come out just, it's a very short announcement. 
we had this last year and it's, it's, a, it's cropping up again. There are texts and emails going out purportedly from me saying go out and buy gift cards and scratch off the back and send me the picture. We don't do that. That isn't me. I just wanted everybody to be aware, you know, that it's going around. We would never ask for money that way. Uh, first off, the money, it never comes directly to me. For the times that we ask you for what's in the collection or what's through the electronic giving, it's always the payee is the parish. And the cash goes to the parish. It doesn't come to me. For those who, in uh, the only time we use gift cards, sometimes people give gift cards, uh, especially the supermarket ones, to the pantry. Again, that comes not scratched off, not emailed, not um, uh, photographed and texted back. We give it to the pantry and they will give it directly to the families. So I just wanted to make you aware, if you get something that is purportedly from me, somehow electronically they can make it look like it's coming from Father Holtz, Reverend Holtz, Pastor of St. Rayfield's, all these things. We've just gotten a few calls already today saying people are receiving these. We don't do that. Disregard it, delete it. That is not, we don't send out things like that. You're incredibly generous for people who, I, I don't want that generosity to be taken advantage of. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.